so this was the whole loop of fraud they were conducting they were just fraudly taking and he was just sleeping in his house and one day Garda came and knocked his door hello everybody welcome back to living a little i know it's been so long i have created a video firstly i was traveling to india and previously i was preparing for my travel and in the meanwhile i lost my baggage i'm not sure if you guys follow me on instagram i post all the details on how my travel was how i lost my baggage and the update is until now i haven't received my baggage i'm going to create a different video for the same but today in this video we are going to talk about one of the most important factors when, when a student or somebody who moves to Ireland what are the different types of fraud they came across so two major fraud one related to part time for students and the second one is accommodation so I have had chat with a student about the recent accommodation fraud she had been into so being a student you want to take care of your expenses and you want to look after yourself but don't get in the trap of something wherein you have like you have to mentally and physically drain your yourself from something so while randomly i was scrolling over my instagram i came across a message on my instagram reel which was from anudha anudha is a student in ireland she's studying in galway and sorry i could not reply to a lot of people via dms because i receive tons of dms every day and it's really difficult to keep track of all the messages so i apologize but still if anybody has any questions any doubts they can reach out and schedule a one-on-one -on -one call with me if there is something on immediate basis so Anuda, she got into a recent fraud of accommodation. She came across a host agent via Facebook. Her friend posted on different Facebook groups and one of the agent replied to her and you know she asked her like I have a property and she showed the property to her. They had a video chat about the property and she reached, she was contacted by a host agent and you know she showed the property and now let's move on and see what she has to talk about the recent fraud she has been into. Before we start, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, of course. So I'm Anagha Kamat. I live in Galway and I'm studying Masters in Data Analytics from NUIT. So I came to Ireland in August and it's been like four months. And after like literally I have li lived with landlords for three months, which was a huge mistake of my life, I believe. But thankfully, I'm uh, like, I have found a place right now in Galway. That's great to know that now you have found a place. But let's talk about your experience. What has all happened previously with you so that people who are coming and who would be struggling with these things, we can help them to escape from these sort of frauds. So do you want to share your story now? Initially, we were told that there will be only one landlord. Like the one woman will be living with us and that's it. When we landed in Tume, we came to Tume, she said that along with the landlady, there will be her two sons and a dog living. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we got to know that we only be having one basic facility, which is wardrobe for us. So she literally provided us with small containers and uh, railings that were almost a month after. Mm -hmm. Till then, we just had to use our suitcases and everything. So first fraud was this, like the agent didn't tell us each and every single details. And before you stuff. moved here, did you see the pictures of the house? Yes, we even had a video call, uh, like one of our friend who currently lives here, he came to like check the house. Even during that time, the dog and the two boys were not shown in the camera mm -hmm. and nothing was mentioned about the wardrobes either. So could you see the wardrobes during the video call or no? Uh, they didn't open it, but he they did show that this is the wardrobes and this is the bed. And, and it was there when you arrived. Yeah, like the wardrobes were there, but it were they were full of owner's clothes. And she was like, I cannot give you my wardrobe. Oh. And she could also, even, in, uh, even if it was our room, she would come and take her clothes. That's weird. Like if that's your own personal space, why would she come and use that? Exactly. So you framed it in such a way that you have everything, but when Actually, you arrived, you didn't. I wouldn't blame the landlord because I uh, I would blame the agent because it's the agent's responsibility to do that. And so next, what happened? Uh, the landlady was like she was going through some emotional issues, but because of that, all her anger used to get on us, the tenants, which is not a professional behavior. She used to yell at us all. And even her one of her sons, uh, he was a uh, like uh he didn't treat us well, like go do this thing, go do that thing. Her first story had a dispute with the landlady and she asked them to move out. Then they contacted the agent and asked for the deposit on. 
but she said i'm not going to do the deposit return you can find a similar property and then you can move on without paying the deposit like you can just pay the rent okay so we said we are ready to move out we just want our deposit so landlady talked with the agent and agent confirmed landlady that she will give us the deposit apparently she took 300 euro service charges from us apart she from took the deposit 200- deposit is 200 euros okay. service charges is 300 euros and then we paid 300 euros rent separately but did you try to uh, let them know like there are no service charges or was that mentioned in your agreement mm-hmm. yeah yeah uh, it was in, uh, mentioned in my contract but that's their like mistake that. right they are asking you to leave the property it's not you exactly that's my that was my point but she was like i can do this is your contract you signed the contract till january we cannot make any changes one mistake was that i should have consulted garda back yeah. then only but it was just one month we were new right. that that's time so you just don't uh, like when it through you don't things. understand the laws and how to approach yeah. and what would be the next exactly. you are just scared to do these things so unfortunately we had to shift with the another host family so she was better than before but still it's a landlord and if we are living in their places we, you will never ever feel homey homely and during their stay in the second property the landlady came to them during 15th of december and their lease was ending the 8th of january and she came in and asked when you guys are living so they mentioned our lease is until 28th of january so we haven't found the house and we would eventually start when our lease is about to end but the landlady wanted to bypass the host agent and she found somebody who was who was supposed to move to her house in january you know so that she don't have to pay some commission to the agent so she mentioned like you you guys have to move out so they started looking for property and they found some legit property via institutional groups and they wanted to move out there but again the host agent drama came in she's not going to give it the deposit because you're moving before your prior date but they mentioned that the landlady itself has asked us to move out and when the host agent contacted the landlady she denied on the face that i never asked them to move out i was just asking uh, when these guys are moving out so that i can prepare for next month so she lied again and these guys were again trapped because of no mistake at all and they actually found a real place but then they eventually had to give up on their deposit if you look at the rental agreement it's just two pages and they barely have any information it looks like something self made then they were still hopeful and they were messaging the host agent like you know return our deposit back then she mentioned like if they reach out to her more and they disturb her she's going to file a case for harassment to them so anuda mentioned like they went to garda for consultation and they shared the whole scenario with them and to their opinion the police or the garda mentioned like they cannot help really much in that because it clearly looks like uh, the rental agreement is not a legit one and it is not up to the irish standards so these guys should be careful enough to understand but that's not really a fault for them because they moved to a new country they have been new to the laws and they have been not understanding what's happening around so there is a mistake on their end as well a bit but still the the chaos or the things they have been through they try to reach out to garda but had to go through a whole consultation process the solicitor has to come in and they would have to file a case then they have to jump in around various courts and look out for the possible solution they also had a chat with their second landlord because she was a bit kind enough to respond to her problems because uh, the deposit would only be able to, they would only be able to get the deposit through the host agent not through the landlord so she, the landlord told that the host agent is doing things off record she doesn't pay the taxes so that's her story about all the chaos she had faced mm-hmm. during her master's journey and she had major major dispute with both of the hosts she has been into and that is really unfortunate when somebody moves abroad for their studies and they had to go through all this process not seek any help from the government in such cases because they have already signed that agreement and the host agent can actually go to the court and show like they have signed that agreement and it's what they have approved it so what they learned from this experience like they need to look out for some real agreement from the host agent they have been looking into and due to privacy reasons we cannot share details about the host also i remember one of my friends she was moving a house in dublin 3 years back and she paid the deposit of 500 euro that guy showed the house and the next day when she visited the house with her luggage apparently that guy wasn't available nobody was there and the actual owner came in and told there is no such guy who came here 
and the fraud guy actually created a duplicate key to the house and he showed the house and ran away with 500 euros so there are a lot of frauds happening for both part-time and accommodation and various more things in ireland due to a lot of people migrating but you need to be sure and confirmed enough of various things you have been putting your efforts and money into so make sure whatever the possible things you can look out to find accommodation do all these things in a legit way or go through a legit websites and try to escape from this frauds and learn from the experiences which people have shared here as another mentioned the accommodation crisis issue has improved in Galway and people are actually able to land a house so do not worry accommodation is not a nightmare you can still find yourself a good house make sure you keep your search valid enough so that you know you do not fall into these traps of fraud so i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions about anuda and i have to keep this video some short and i could not share her whole story you might have got some idea on how things work here and how the fraud happens so thank you anuda for all your time and sharing your experience with us and thank you guys for watching this video i'll see you guys in the next video